Of course, um, 10 years ago, there was a real scientific rationale to combine a cytostatic agent with the rituximab. We showed in vitro that uh, there's a synergistic, a supra-additional effect to combine bendamustine and rituximab. Nowadays, we all know that uh, you can combine rituximab with every chemotherapy and it makes sense. However, uh, in these days, it was our rationale to combine it with rituximab, the bendamustine, in order to improve, of course, the anticipated efficacy by bendamustine alone. And we were very surprised by the high efficacy in the pretreated patient population in a phase two study with 60 patients. We observed an overall response rate of 90% and a very low toxicity profile. And then we started um, um, our randomized trial and we wanted to compare the bendamustin plus rituximab in the frontline treatment against the so-called standard of care. We decided in our steering committee to compare the bendamustin as a single agent combined with rituximab against the CHOP plus rituximab because we believe this is a very tough comparison and this is a really challenging thing. And these results presented just in the last ASH meeting were very, very surprising and were very provocative because in the end, what was a surprise for everybody, the bendamustin rituximab was indeed superior to the CHOP plus rituximab in terms of efficacy, which was the progression-free survival. And on the other side of the coin, it was indeed less toxic. And at this ASH meeting, we... Um, presented another randomized trial, which we initiated at the same moment in the year 2003, but um, we only had our results available at this ASH meeting. This was in the relapsed disease situation, not frontline, but relapsed. Mm -hmm. And again, we compared bendamustin rituximab in the same schedule, which is 90 milligram per meter square on two consecutive days, repeated every four weeks, up to six cycles. And the same regimen, which was superior in frontline to CHOP-R, we tested in the relapsed disease situation against flutarabine plus rituximab. And again, we confirmed that the bendamustin plus rituximab is a very active regimen in that disease situation. And again, it came out that this trial was positive in respect that bendamustin rituximab was superior in terms of effectiveness and in terms of side effect and toxicity profile, it showed no difference to the flutarabine. So the flutarabine plus rituximab was not such a very toxic pro, uh, regimen, so we saw no differences, but we saw an impressive superiority of bendamustin rituximab over flutarabine in progression-free survival and in overall and complete response rates. So I would be cautious with this term of standard of care. We really wanted to define it in the last 30 years and nobody really can make it because we have so many treatment options available. And now we have one or two studies out there in a randomized whale which showed superiority. And um, um, however, as a consequence of these two trials, I think this bendamustin plus regimen plus rituximab regimen will be adopted by many physicians in the future in particular for the patients who are a little bit older. Um, however, I still want to say even in the younger patients, it's a better treatment when the patients don't have the risk of toxicity as with CHOP and a better efficacy. But um, the situation is that the bendamustin was recently approved and marketed in the United States of America. There it is approved since two years and it was adopted very fast in a very um, high market field, yeah, so um, many patients already are being treated with bendamustin rituximab in the States. And just very recently, I think um, some months ago, the European authority, the EMEA, has, um, read, has approved the bendamustin for the treatment of indolent lymphomas. Of course, in a special disease situation, which has to be um, um, accepted um, and um, the other thing is now that all European countries very soon will have the bendamustin available. So now at the current moment we are in that situation that it is negotiated with all local authorities and um, um, it has to be negotiated with a reimbursement and so on in every country. And this is every time it's different. That is what I have learned from the experience with my colleagues all over Europe but they are all waiting for the availability of bendamustin. And then 
the patients will be treated with that and as a consequence of this we will have much more study results available very soon because when all the other countries like Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Scandinavian countries and Polish and um, Czech, and Czech countries will maybe start their own trial, mm -hmm. we will gain more and more knowledge about how to best use the treatment in this disease situation.